Okay, so now um, you LS. Once I finish this one, I will add your your name, and then you should be able to taste it. Just um, okay. So already exists. It's only just that. Uh, is... You can try Docker Compose up. No, no, I, I'm now adding, um, I'm allowing people to Docker Compose out of it. So, um, either so here. <coughs> so, <coughs> so, maybe I am in group one, right? Am I in group one? Because I, I don't see... Yeah, this in... is not group two. Okay, so I, let me just finish it here, but let me... Uh... Here. So Elias, can you go? Now can you log in? If you have logged in, log out. Okay. And can you screen share? And then once that works, I will we'll basically just update for everyone. So if you just log out, yeah. Exit, exit is better. And then you can control it, control C. Okay, then just log in again. If you can expand, that would be great. How's working from here? Yeah, but. We uh, do you want to docker compose from there? Yeah, navigate it back to the okay. location. We are. I think it's easier just to work if you are working in a terminal just from where you were. I would say expand that one and work from there. Ah, uh, did you git clone? Ah, okay. So no, no, it's okay. Just good. So you know, you don't need to git clone. 
just go back there, just where you were, MR, like the terminal, not this one, but just the terminal where you were. Okay, great, so just work for me. Is me? Is that me or Elias was frozen? Hello? Yeah, yeah, he's frozen. He's frozen. Stop sharing and start sharing again, I think, Elias. Elias, can you hear us? If so, just... I think his internet probably is. Uh, someone is calling him in that case. Yeah, if he is connected through the phone. It's the serial. Okay, again, it's the same, right? Permission denied. Okay. Then I have to docker, I have to add actually docker to a pseudo. Maybe it's just this one, let me try. So if you just, um, hmm. it's working for me. Hmm? The internet starts working. Is it working? Oh, great. So what, what, what did you do? I started working from like the terminal. Okay, yeah, because I think that that's basically refreshes. That's why it's usually easier to create. But now this is not, the error is not permission, right? Yeah, this is warning, not um... Okay, great. So that means it's working. And if it finishes, then we would be able to we will just you will be able to see docker ps and then we will be able to see if you are connected and if anyone has questions so far i mean and i'm going to add everyone in their own group just to be able to in the docker as a docker user and then after that um, you should be able to to run without 
without root. In the meantime, while it's running, if you have any question. I think that, that one is fine, right? It's like you will fix it. But if you just docker ps as either the server or the something, is it is it running? You go down. Okay. Then docker image. Can you just docker image? Okay. So it's a matter of compiling that it, it should work. But does anyone have any, any question? Any other, I mean, it, it, it can be related to this, it can be related to anything. So if, like Elias, then can I ask you, if you guys do this group does this, what is, what do you expect now? Then do you have, have you, do you, is it connected to Kafka, Airflow and that? Is it going to work like that? It is, or group two? Anyone from group two? Okay, like from our side, what we are thinking is like the backing server would store it on SSE bucket. Yeah. The audio. Files. Then, like using Airflow, like maybe within an hour or like within one day, we'll just load everything that are stored on specific bucket then like do some transformation using spark and clean it and then like we'll send it using Kafka to like another bucket where it would be stored the final version would be stored okay so what i'm saying is that well are you simulating using just the existing data so are you testing that i mean what is the so what we want is let's say there is a front end in this case just whatever that you are asking a user, you show a text and then you want them to read. And when it's read, then the voice, basically the audio is then sent back to Kafka and then we, basically with ID of the text. And then that will be reprocessed exactly using um, a Spark, and then you basically just save it into a bucket somewhere, right? That's the flow we want. So where are you in that flow? Like we have done most of it independently, but like we couldn't really combine them because of the Okay, great. So hopefully later today we can talk and this will be solved and we will be able to see where, where if, if all the things are working. And at use the simul like basically the data that you used in week four or something as your simulator. That means you kind of create a code or you know that will basically generate randomly a text audio combination and then it will basically yeah, it's kind of you simulate the whole environment without actually even if you don't it. But you can also build your own like for a few cases like saying like okay i'm just generating and then i'm reading and then that will just report back so the, the same as a real case so as i use simulation which means the audio is not just what a user inputs but what has already recorded from the previous training or you can see test its actual case which is that you read or anyone reads and then it will send audio but later let's see if everything works We'll, we'll be able to discuss and figure it out where you guys are. Okay. Uh, so where do you use Airflow? Airflow is just basically in synchronizing, orchestrating the entire thing, you know, how, where things are, who, who's kind of gonna uh, start when. So it's basically the, it's, it's a scheduler. It's more like a manager. It's like, it tells everyone in the system, what to do when. 
So does it mean we use the to schedule the Spark session? It's good, yeah, including that. Yeah, including that. Okay. So it could be time-based trigger. It could be, so in that case, it will be like, it will start up like you tell Spark, I mean, Airflow tells Spark to get up every hour and do it, its job. It could be, the trigger in that case is what, what is called a cron type, which means it's scheduled in time. But it could be also based on some other triggers that someone, you know, Kafka receives something. So in that case, it could be just like event driven. Uh, so Mukutsi, and you had a question. So you had raised your hand. Yes, I had a question on Airflow. Can you be, be a bit louder? I had a question on Airflow. Yeah. We've done the installation, but we are getting an error on the SQLite library. It's on the server. And it's very hard to hear you. We've done the installation. Yeah. But we are getting an error on the SQLite library that is on the server. Okay, so maybe you should use some, some other, instead of SQLite, maybe you should use MySQL or Postgres. So if you follow one of the example, yeah. it recommends you just to, to use Postgres or one of them. So better to use that, just to install that. But we are not, also not able to install because of the permissions. Uh, yeah. Okay, so then connect is, um, Kevin, are you here? Kevin is not there. Can you reach out to Kevin? But I mean, in principle, you can also ask other people who have done that. Did you have an issue? Other groups? How did how did you guys solve it? Mukutsi, did you? Ask for help in Rocket Chat. No, we've not asked for help yet. Uh, I'll take a risk in the meeting first. Okay, I think that would be great just to always not pause because of error, because other people don't seem to have error. So it may, they, they could help. Okay. So it, yeah, and connect, write it there as well as also ask for, ask Kevin. And that's called your group, who's your group? like there should be also one person that actually takes this challenge and connect and find solution. I think that's, uh, this is called proactivity. It's like you need to be proactive as a group to get something solved in, an, uh, in a minute or a few minutes or maximum one hour um, so that you don't slow down. So I assume if it is a permission thing, Kevin can fix it. If it is, if you can still run it without any pseudo thing. It, I think other people probably have solved it. You may, you may, yeah. So if anyone had error in a scale light and they solved it, please connect with Mukutsi and their group. It's good. Okay, thank you. No worries. Jakinda? Uh, no, I think you asked, you answered my question when you were talking about uh, airflow are being triggered uh, about uh, if there's something that has been stored in Kafka because I wanted to ask that uh, what's the perfect time to uh, power up Airflow because uh, I understand that uh, if the data is stored uh, in Kafka for some a number of time it can get lost or something. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just I'm just checking now Google saying Airflow triggered that on event, right? So I am just, I think that's how I would do it. You you would see it, right? It's like, if I want something. I just usually also, say, I don't remember most of the stuff. And then probably let's just triggering DAGs, then on a schedule when you create a DAG or triggering manually, Schedule for it, therefore triggers the tag, trigger it up on the schedule, about scheduling. So, okay, example, 
and start dates at minute zero of every hour. This is this is what a cron like. Um, So I think the, the, what you could do is that, depending on, so even if it's, it doesn't seem actually what, I may be wrong, that they might not be able to read. It may be just, it's driven by time, but you, may, you can add a DAG that actually is a monitor every second, it could be, uh, or every minute, that it checks if there are new events in, in Kafka, and then it basically then triggers, it controls that. Or you can actually directly, of course, connect um, Kafka events to the Spark streaming. But I would say you could just achieve anything, of course, by making it like regularly having a DAG in your airflow that monitors and then when it finds something new, uh, like every minute, then it calls the relevant other tags, basically, or other Python functions. So that, that way you can achieve, basically, a monitoring. Yeah, when it finds new, then it, it calls all the relevant elements, including instantiate Spark to pre-process, and then after that, when that finishes, it, it then uh, calls another probably to put it into S3 um, using basically the Delta Lake code. So you create a data lake from that. I think that, that should just be... Has anyone already tested something similar? Uh, kindly, kindly share that link, please. Um, here. Has anyone, so what is your experience so far? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not understanding, like I understand group two, they already are there and they are already testing. Hopefully then by the end of today, they might, if. Uh, this thing works, then they will be able to, um, yeah, they will be able to probably have end-to-end -end solution, hopefully. Hopefully you have tested publishing in Kafka as well as subscribing and reading. So, but what about other groups? Group one, like, where are you, like, in terms of the end-to-end -end completing the project? For us, we are working the front end. Okay. We are about to finish. And the back end. So the later today, we will finish up. And uh, I, I think our... So we, we, we discussed to compile what we have. Okay. And just to... Uh, are, to you also, are you also dockerizing it? Are you running a Docker using, so everything is in, in a Docker or are you going to run from normally? Yeah, we have the Docker file, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think Stacia is working on that. Great, Stacia, can you give us some update on that? Is the Docker ra running locally? Yeah, locally it's it's running. For me also, the Docker thing. Great. And are you okay, Milky? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning. Morning. Um, well, my question is that, like, uh, should we make the entire process, uh, uh, the entire project in a Docker? When we finalized, 
I mean, I, I think it makes sense to dockerize some things like the way that, like in this case, hello, can you hear? Do you hear me? Is it only Milky or you don't hear me as well? We can hear you. Okay. Milky, can you hear now? I think your internet might, might be... I think it makes sense to dockerize these this cases, mostly because you want to deploy it anywhere and you want to have less trouble. And that is the current philosophy, just most of the time, dockerize it and make it instances such that you can run it independently and you can more control it. So don't compose and run it in different systems in Kubernetes or uh, ECS and such that you have to maintain. And then you develop and create the Docker instance, basically the Docker image using the CICD from, you know, in Git. So you will have a full control in that way and you'll be able to manage it easily. So if you hear Milky, that's, yeah, that's highly recommended. Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Can you also do uh, use the Docker for communication purpose? In which context? So, so I mean, the, I am working on the Kafka and the web as well as the S3 bucket communication. Yeah. So, so, so I mean, is... yeah. What do you, what what do you want to do? It communicate means in which context? You mean for so, Airflow, or? Uh, so I'm working on the the JavaScript, but I, I do not have an idea on the Java, and I try to use the instead of Java, I use JSON file to communicate the S3 bucket and the Kafka. Okay, so that that basically is a TCP connection. That means it's like the you know HTTP or another protocol connection. So as long as you're connecting from one service to another service through the API, and usually the APIs connect using Java, like JSON files, right? So in that way, you don't need any middle. If you want, you can have this, you know, in the middle something, but I don't think you need it. It's just only to yeah, you just need to send it, and and um, so I don't understand in which context you want to use the Docker. Docker, you can use it anything that if you have to install something, if you want to maintain something, then instead of maintaining just the code, then you put it in a Docker, and it has its own space, and there you can do whatever you want. Um, so that's if you have more process, it's of course always advised that you put it. In, in its own Docker. And you can have multiple Dockers running and connecting to each other. But for simple communication, you use just HTTP. That means you send something to the API and you, you get something in return. So it's more of just a TCP connection. Yeah. So group three, where are you? Like if it were a work, like, yeah, Milky? Uh, yeah, my connection, uh, and uh, I was disconnected. Anyways, yeah. the thing I was asking was that, um, are we supposed to make the project uh, in, uh, in, a docker, in a dockerized way? Should we submit that in a dockerized way? I think the other way will be much difficult, harder for you. I think we didn't demand much, but I would say it's highly recommended you dockerize everything just so that you know you create an, an instance that is the docker instance that's kind of the front end and then you can have another docker instance that is basically where um, it does the um, airflow and then but for spark you already have spark so you could just be fine but i think 
I would say, yeah, the, the, more, do, the more you package it, the easier it is to deploy. Um, but, but I so, think but it's not for, the time, for the time being, I, I didn't think about dockerizing it. Yeah, but so, I mean, I think docker dockerization is actually much easier than you one thinks, right? It's just only you copy some docker file and that's it. It's like as long as it can run in Python as an environment, then dockerizing is just, just, just a very few lines more. I don't think you need much more than a few lines. To dockerize so it should just be like somebody will be in your group given a task to dockerize it maybe just even copy from others like how they do it and then it should just be simple it should just be like you should feel the dockerization is the same as python environment except just slightly more is that right okay it's specifying which requirements to install and which Python version you want to uh, basically pull, and that's it. After that, it's just, it's a bash kind of running, writing a bash script to run your own, whatever you were doing without Docker. So it shouldn't be that complex. And then writing a Docker Compose again is a very simple process. If you have multiple dockers, that's where Docker Compose is useful. Then you can put them, you can run all of them in one using Docker Compose. So yeah, just, I don't think it will take you more. Just assign someone responsible for that. Okay, group three. I just wanna, I just wanna hear from each group. No worries. I just want to hear from each group where you are. And remember, I am now treating you not as trainees. You are just at work, and each of you, there is a department called Group 3, and a department from Group 3 must report, right? Just don't, don't, it is, we pass that level of speak and all that. It's just your responsibility to be, to respond, um, updates where you are. And if, if, I'm sure each group has their own leader. If the leader is there, just usually the leader starts reporting. So is the, whoever is managing group three, is it here? Is, is that person here? If not, can someone from group three? Okay. So group three seems there's CB Tinder. Okay, Milky, yeah. I thought my 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 group leaders were gonna speak up, but yeah. if they're not here, well. Uh, so so far we have been able to work parallelly on uh, different parts of the project. Like uh, uh, we have completed the Python server, the Kafka server, and the um, the front end part. The remaining part is uh, Airflow and uh, Spark. Uh, the, mm, some members are already working on the Spark part. Yeah. I'll be finishing the Airflow part today. So, mm, like it's going well. I, I think uh, I think we'll be able to finish the task in time. Great. Thanks. Group four. Where are you? Okay, good morning. Morning. Okay, uh, in our group, uh, we have almost done the front end and the back end uh, up and uh, Kafka server and connecting and reading from the S3 buckets. What's left is like connecting these three services together and the uh, other part is the Airflow and uh, the Spark and we plan to finish it today. And we haven't thought about using Docker. It wasn't even in our issues, so we will also add that as a task. So by tomorrow, we will connect everything and get it working. 
Yeah. So my recommendation, don't wait. Just somebody let it work in a Docker, whatever is finished, put it in a Docker, prepare the Docker one. Once you, you get the handle of it, it just gets easy. So tomorrow when you test it, then a few of the things already are tested. So work parallelly. Um, and yeah, just it should just be easy. Okay, great. Group fine. Same? Um, so I think the different parts, except maybe Airflow and Spark remain uh, with the front end service. I had used uh, Node, but the consumer for Node does not have a polling option. So it was very difficult to retrieve just a single message. And the previous solution that I had made for the interim submission wasn't efficient and it sometimes crashed the server. So I am rewriting the service in Flask uh, using the Python and Flask. I should complete it now and create the Docker file and be done soon. I think that covers most of it. But we haven't about planned on the group, yeah. Docker, um, I guess it's a we had considered it, but I we were thinking of just for now running the server locally. Uh, with the group, I think uh, the communication with the S3 is done, but I'm not entirely sure. I think maybe one of them can say more if they're here. I think. Yep. Jackinda is here. Jackinda can talk more about that or please. Ah, yes, yeah, so we just had some some issues with uh feeding from the stream bucket, but uh now we are sorting it out. I guess after that will be okay because you are uh we were trying to, we weren't able to read from the stream bucket previously, but I think now we're good to do. Okay. Great. You know, one thing we are expecting you to defend the work, right? It's like that means it should work with now another extension. It should work and handle real data. It's like, and that data will be, let's say, at least 1,000 users connected. And don't treat it as just an assignment. I'm just, I am not saying that you're treating it, but try to think about, uh, in a group, the reason we are, you are in a group is really to benefit from like some people start thinking the test where it could fail, you know, what is kind of the assumptions that went into it um, in deployment, how, you know, the entire thing. It's like you are a data engineering team building a pipeline and you, you should treat it that way. It shouldn't just to submit something, but it should, you know, this is your flagship for project for some of you. And next week, or like, we will do the same, something similar, but now you are setting up a data engineering tech stack. That basically means that you would start in, from a database and you would install dbt and do transformations and the scripts that you have to run. So in a way that from now on, you really have to work for company assume and that company is an industry it needs a reliability for anything the reason the difference between individual projects versus industries that industry doesn't like downtimes that means it want to really minimize a lot but, and then it, it needs to be reliable it should be um, a lot more stable that when people when users are connected from the front they shouldn't experience hassle so just that you cannot work independently. You must tie together and, and kind of always, uh, otherwise it's like one works, does, does, the other doesn't work. So I would say think that way. Um, so just that is my advice, but great. So in group six. So on our group side, uh we tried everything, uh, including the Kafka uh, S3 buckets, and now we are left on the uh, Airflow. 
which is we are trying to write the Doug script. That's why Mukuzi were asking for the airflow. I think we just asked Kevin to update the the, uh, the airflow version. And other than that, I think we are left with the merging and also with the Doug script. Then, so we're gonna merge. And for the Docker, I think uh, at first we were using it on locally. Now that it's running on AWS, we'll try to dockerize everything, yeah. Awesome, fantastic. Great, so I think, yeah, if you have questions, I will hopefully, we'll have another call later today, just so that hopefully that wherever you are, even if it's not Docker, that you should be able to demonstrate where it is, um, such that we will, we will update our expectations, Milky. Yeah, it's the configuration, uh, configuring it to work on the AWS is somehow tedious, I suppose. At least uh, letting letting it work on our uh, local machine kind of uh, should be the first thing that we should show, I suppose. I think I think it's it's okay. It's like as long as you are, uh, that's what Docker is really good. If it works in your local, it will work in AWS. Yeah, yeah, like first localizing it in our own local yeah. machine and uh, showing but it. Showing I it. think thinking that way sometimes is really not, uh, like, it's okay. It's absolutely okay and I'm, I'm, we're all fine. But it, there should be, a, there, there is no difference local and not you know, remote. I, like, it's a matter of like internet. But if you do if you do it also in, in AWS, it just is the same. So, but again, that is much more of a philosophy than uh, practicality. If you are comfortable doing it locally because you can control everything, then fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But That's it, you know, okay. I want to do it. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of the time, you know that in, in in real cases, you might not be able to work locally because of security reasons. And so, but then you, it's okay if it's just testing some things on a dummy data or whatever, or developing locally is much easier and better because you don't need connections and all that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a mindset that is much more like we want, it's like that you work on reliable ways, like just, assuming like, okay, here are my components I have done. I think you already planned it and you understand the workflow, why you need what, like just all is each components and, and having a, a good understanding about each component, you know, what is like, okay, I need to communicate that. Okay, Kafka is doing this part and I need to publish that. So, and then how am I going to test this? So test driven development is exactly this is again, this is, you are forced now even to think test because, okay, how am I gonna test? It's gonna not really uh, be immediately deployed and receive like a, a huge crowd. Therefore, what you do is that you still need to process, you still need to test your system handling a bit bigger data, right? So let's imagine just the data that you have already that you used to train, but it could be an English even set, like training set. So if we want like to test it, stress test your your code your handling of course we will not because of our capacity in terms of like we didn't give you that big uh, machine but at least the one that you used for um, week four that data you can use it as a testing as if that is the audio is coming live from the from the front end so but if we want to test it like in terabytes we will just apply we will use for example the english training set, because we don't care at the moment. What we care is that as a data engineer, in this case, you only, okay, there will be a text displayed in the front end. There will be a recording happening and that, that recording is then sent back to the Kafka and Kafka does that. So it's a whole process is written and everything is ex explicitly stated. What kind of communication do you need? You know, and, and then you all understand that. In a group, when you discuss, it should just be like, it's clear that everybody understands the choices that are made. And that is what a good team is for me. It's like that you planned the different types of communication in which form it's communicated. For example, earlier, someone mentioned that yeah, it's like, 
the JavaScript, and then an API, do we need that? Okay, like that. So if, if you all understand that part, then it's great. And then if you implement and if you have tested it, that's all completed the project. So hopefully you all now understood the entire pipeline. Uh, it's only just implementation. And I think it seems from the updates, every team is great, in a good shape. So looking forward to see the deployments and, and tests. And we can talk about tomorrow, probably, where we can deploy um, some selected ones and start collecting data. Awesome. If there is any question, if not, we can stop here. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, Kevin, if you are here, just let's, I will call you just so that we can add every every user in the Docker user, as a Docker user, such that they can run without pseudo. Awesome. Cheers, guys.